Now in part B, we're asked to find out what the coefficient of friction is, mu. And to do this, what we need to do now is resolve up the plane in the direction of motion. Normally when you get questions on resolving, generally you'll find yourself resolving in two perpendicular directions. So this is no exception, we're resolving up the plane. And if we resolve up the plane, what are we going to have? Well, let's start with the 36 newtons. Remember that could be split into two components, one up the plane, one away from the plane. The one away from the plane has no effect because it's perpendicular to the direction we're resolving. We just want the one up the plane. And it contains the angle here of 30 degrees, so that's always going to be cosine when it contains the angle. So that's going to be 36 then, cosine of 30 degrees, 36 cos 30. So that's that one done. Don't have to worry about r because it's perpendicular to the direction we're resolving. Mu r, all of mu r acts in the opposite direction to the way we're going. So that's going to be minus mu r. So we can put minus mu times r. All right. And then we've got the weight here, 4g newtons. This is inclined then to this direction here. So we need to split the 4G into two components. One acts down the plane and one acts into the plane. We can ignore the one into the plane because it's perpendicular to this direction. But the one down the plane, in this right angle, we've got the 30 degrees. It excludes the 30 degrees. So it's going to be minus 4G sine 30 degrees. Okay, when you exclude an angle, always sine. So therefore we've got minus 4g sine of 30 degrees. So this is the resultant force acting on the particle. But because there's no acceleration, it's moving at a constant speed, normally we'd have our force equals mass times acceleration. But the acceleration, as I say, is zero. So mass times zero is just going to give us zero. The overall resultant force then acting on the particle is zero. So all we need to do now is just rearrange this for mu. We could add mu r to both sides, make it positive. So it'd have 36 cos 30 minus 4g sine 30 equals mu r, and then just divide by r. And that would give us mu. Mu then would equal 36 cosine of 30 degrees minus 4g sine of 30 degrees and it would be all divided by r. And r we can pick up from the previous part of the question. It was 15.9481. We don't want to copy that value in because it will give us a rounded answer. So just put 15.9481 we don't need to worry about the other digits there. We should have enough accuracy to work this out. So if you do do this sum, you should find that you get 0 0.72590. And that looks encouraging because you can generally expect mu to be a value less than 1. Although it can go over 1, but uh, generally it's less than 1. So let's say we round this to three significant figures. That's going to be 0.726 to three significant figures, 3SF, okay?